Today's uh, presentation on the Corona Y Knowledge Graph is by Slava Tykonov. And uh, Slava, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself um, and then yeah. you can go right into your slides. Okay, okay. Thanks, David. So, uh, my name is Slava Tikhanov, and uh, I'm senior information scientist from DANCE, uh, this institution from Netherlands. And uh, DANCE is a part of Dutch Royal Academy of Arts and Sciences. And I'm going to tell you something about CoronaVi uh, community and COVID 19 knowledge graph that we are building. So, a little bit about myself. Um, well, in, in last four years, uh, I participated in more than 10 uh, mostly European projects. And uh, my topic of interest is research infrastructures. And here you can see the list. If you're interested, you, you can always Google and uh, you will understand what it's about. And also the link to link LinkedIn is shared. So um, just a little bit of context. Uh, why I think this topic is very important. So I've got locked uh, in uh, real lockdown in Spain. So I spent seven weeks without possibility, uh, possibility to go out from my apartment. And uh, at that time, I understood that uh, it's going to be really serious uh, challenge for uh, society. And uh, I started to do uh, a lot of uh, research uh, related to COVID-19 uh, spread. And uh, at that time, also, it was a very popular song in Spain called Resistere. And basically, people that uh, got ex uh, exactly the same problem that uh, as me they got locked in their apartments so uh, Spanish musicians they made a song and uh, they decided to uh, record through zoom or Skype and this is really nice song that uh, we can resist against any kind of uh, challenges even if it's COVID so I thought why not to use exactly the same approach and just not to create uh, online community and start to fight against, against coronavirus spread in this way. So uh, I, I first have created um, the uh, COVID-19 data hub on Harvard Dataverse in March, and I started to collect uh, data in Europe. And uh, we, we basically, uh, yeah, situation was, was no, not very good with uh, COVID-19 data because uh, people just, just uh, started to publish data in different places and without any standardization. So uh, I've created this hub and I started to collect data and to create uh, metadata descriptions and uh, contacted uh, data collectors and advised them how to do that in a fair way. So basically it was my first experience uh, with COVID and uh, after I decided, okay, so I've got a lot of data, so why not to start to analyze those data sets? So I decided to join a CoronaVi community. It was created like a few weeks before I joined. And uh, uh, now it's a quite big community with more than 1,000 people registered and we have hundreds of active uh, contributors. And the idea of this community uh, actually to help uh, medical experts to analyze uh, all data about COVID and to get new insights with help of artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. So this community was formed uh, Form um, when COVID-19 open research uh, dataset challenge was announced. It was basically uh, Allen uh, Institute for AI and uh, a lot of other organizations and companies. And of course, it was supported by White House. So this dataset uh, called Core 19 was published in March, and uh, now it's updated weekly and contains more than uh, 200 and. 80,000 of uh, scholarly articles and more than 80,000 of full text papers. So it's all about COVID-19 and related um, family of viruses. So basically we had uh, these uh, task, tasks when we started to work on it in March and April. And first task was related to uh, risks to get um, infected. And uh, we had also task ties to explore transmission and incubation and other things. Uh, also, we decided to try to match uh, clinical trials. And um, another task was about uh, creation of a literature review tool because it was not possible to navigate through all available papers. And of course, uh, last task is kind of common for all tracks. It's about name and recognition. So we created pipeline actually to extract all 
entities from uh, COVID-19 uh, collection. So, uh, because we got so many uh, data, data and uh, papers, uh, first we, we, we thought, okay, it would be nice to visualize uh, all affiliations of all uh, organizations that are already working on it. So, this is a map, uh, and here you can see where actually people busy with uh, uh, COVID-19 research. So we have uh, a lot of organizations and uh, representatives in the uh, Coronavirus community. And uh, I just will, ma will mention Harvard Medical School, which is very active. And uh, uh, they're bringing Indra uh, framework to our community. And I will explain what it, what it does, actually. And we have people from Stanford, from NASA, from Kegel, and uh, from Germany, from Hofer Institute. And, decipher and uh, a lot of other people. So all of them are bringing on data sets to us. So we basically have kind of endless data streams uh, in our uh, data lake. So um, of course, it's quite difficult to manage uh, those data sets. And we decided to look for some comments. So um, there is really nice framework uh, developed by um, Harvard University. It's called Harvard Data Commons. And I, I really advise you to take a look in this because it's basically it's kind of solution for uh, platforms that are trying to integrate data coming from different uh, and various sources. So basically in this uh, framework, we have research tools, we have data repository, which is in our case, Harvard Dataverse, and we have computing resources provided by Amazon and uh, Google, and we have storage layer. It's also coming from, from those companies. And the idea actually to, to build pipelines and to, to make all processes work together and do it in a fair way. So uh, this is how it looks like. We have different teams working on different topics and we're trying actually to uh, build some, some functionality that can be used uh, by all teams or like most of teams. And uh, basically the idea that uh, all these tools will, 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 will form a common research infrastructure. So if they would like to reuse some components, it should be possible. And I already mentioned FAIR. My organization, Dance Can Away, it's, uh, we are one of world leaders. So we are, we are leading uh, FAIR related projects in, in Europe and uh, in the world. So probably you know what is FAIR, but, but you just to uh, make sure it's, it means uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So this is how all data should be published nowadays to make sense for research and to actually to force them to, to exchange data sets and to reuse all this uh, information in their own research. So uh, I already mentioned Dataverse and this is our integration point. So basically all people uh, from Coronavai, they got account. Uh, everybody can join, just, just create account and they'll get possibility to publish something uh, on our platform. And uh, we're instructing people how to create metadata descriptions, uh, what kind of control vocabularies to use, and uh, also um, new, uh, new teams just getting new containers uh, to deposit that, like daily updates of uh, data sets. So um, at some point, uh, it, it was very successful platform. So we decided why not to uh, get even more data collected uh, in this dataverse. And, uh, we created a crawler that actually harvesting uh, all available COVID-19 uh, data sets from web and uh, trying to extract metadata descriptions automatically and just publishing here. So at some point we've got uh, 700,000 files available in this platform and that's a lot. So we even don't know about content. We, we, we just basically created storage for these files, but we want to analyze everything and of course to turn into knowledge graph. So this is just example how it looks like for COVID-19 risk uh, factors. And uh, Slava, could I? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, can I just ask one question here? When you say 700,000 files, each file represents what? It's a, it's a something COVID-19. So we we're just querying uh, Google and uh, GitHub and other sources and just getting some files uh, about some. COVID-19 related topics and uh, we're extracting uh, variables. I will show you next slides. And okay. we're creating basically preservation layer for that. All right, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is exactly <laughs> what I wanted 
to, uh, to show. So every file, uh, we do verification of file if we can extract content and we extract in variable, variable names and uh, we are publishing in, in Dataverse. So in this example, you can see there is a, a list of spreadsheet available, uh, spreadsheet files available and we extracted variables. We also extended uh, metadata descriptions of uh, those files with variables. So it's very convenient for researchers to navigate through it and uh, just select some uh, data and uh, to use for their search. So it's uh, quite important because uh, after we'll get uh, all variables into knowledge graph, we can also uh, start to build machine learning models and uh, we can predict how they can be classified and we can use for new files coming to our system to create labels uh, in a standardized format. So also we extended uh, uh, Dataverse, uh, this functionality to actually to get uh, all metadata and data from Dataverse in, into uh, Collapse. So this example, how we are reading file in Google Collapse and uh, we can do, uh, researchers can do whatever, whatever they want and they can deposit back results in Dataverse and exchange with other people. So, uh, of course, uh, not uh, our data quality is, uh, well, it's quite poor because uh, we're just harvesting data sets. So we decided why not to contact uh, people that created those data sets and just ask them if they're interested to curate their own data by them themselves. And it was quite interesting experiment and uh, quite successful because more than 20% of people actually agreed. They joined Coronavai and they started to change metadata descriptions. So this bottom up data collection really works, I would say. So obviously uh, we have a challenge of uh, data integration here because we have data from medical, uh, 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 some medical data, we have social economic data, political data, statistics, and uh, data coming from different sources, from different organizations. And uh, we're trying to apply uh, natural language pipelines and other tools actually to get some 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 kind of uh, sense out of what we collected already so we're using manual annotation and labeling of uh, covid-19 related papers automatic entity extraction classification of text fragments statements extraction and curate uh, curation and uh, we're trying to link research papers to research questions these relationships i will i will show you how we're trying to do that so uh, of course, uh, standardization is really, really important in this case. And uh, well, we started with uh, common, uh, well-known ontologies like Orca, Grid, and Geonames, uh, and medical uh, knowledge graphs uh, uh, just got linked by uh, Bell, biological expression language, and um, we're using MeSH and Wikidata. But for uh, bibli bibliographical records, of course, we're using Mark 21, Dublin Core, and uh, DDI. So this is example of uh, Indra. And Indra, uh, I already mentioned, it was developed by Harvard Medical School. And uh, Indra is basically integrated network and dynamic reasoning assembler. And uh, this uh, platform allows to extract statements from research papers. So you can get, uh, you see there is example from left side, you can see uh, it's basically just, just uh, representing statements um, that uh, got mentioned in, in the paper. And uh, of course, because it's research paper, so some statements can, can, can be considered as false and some can be true. So there is also very nice uh, curation uh, mechanism. So people can, experts can, can actually confirm if uh, statements um, true and uh, all this information will go to the knowledge graph. So uh, this is just to, um, to introduce like typical NLP pipeline. So by default, it doesn't have any knowledge graph support, it's just list of words. And of course, to make it uh, um, uh, reused by, by artificial intelligence algorithms, we need to uh, bring some, some common uh, frameworks. So um, in this example, uh, we are building domain-specific knowledge graph, and basically uh, these uh, concepts uh, are coming from uh, statistics uh, about COVID-19 spread from Italy, and uh, it's in Italian. And uh, basically, uh, to make sense of it uh, from it, and also to uh, get possibility to analyze with our tools, we need to convert to some common. Ontology, and we, we have to use this for artificial intelligence 
algorithms. So uh, here I'm coming with um, simple knowledge uh, organization system. So it's cause, of course, you all know what, what's cause is, just, just to be sure that's cause model says uh, thesauri like sources, like uh, concepts and uh, these uh, relations like broader, narrow and uh, related. And uh, the main uh, topic, uh, the main, um, thing about scores that is it's logical is as hierarchies and in Tizari is more or less like is a or part of uh, relationships. So here, of course, you know, we, this picture about um, scores core vocabularies, how it looks like. But in our case, because uh, we have a lot of ontologies already that are interested, uh, interesting for our researchers. So it's a grid database that they basically converted to scores. So um, we, we, we did it uh, manually, but uh, our challenge actually to get uh, this conversion done automatically. So we want um, artificial intelligence to create knowledge graph based on information, based on data that uh, we already collected. And uh, we'll use uh, machine learning to uh, predict uh, both ontologies and uh, links. So, uh, here uh, you see uh, our framework, it's called Cosmos, and it was developed in Europe uh, uh, by National Library of Finland, and it has a quite active global user community, and basically it allows to search and browse through SCOS concepts. So this is very um, useful and convenient web interface where people can just uh, um, can just uh, browse and can see how all concepts are related, how they're linked, and uh, they can use for different uh, use cases. Like they uh, can publish the vocabularies, can build discovery systems, can uh, do vocabulary visualizations, a lot of interesting things. And basically for us, it's kind of validation uh, if uh, something that we are doing this course actually makes sense. So uh, SCOS pipeline looks like that. Uh, it has uh, Jenna Fuseki uh, backend, which is Sparkle server and RDF tri triple store. And it's integrated with Lucene search, search engine. So basically it allows to search through all concepts and to get some, some results uh, via API. And of course, uh, important ontologies uh, like Mesh already available in Cosmos, and also they did linkage to uh, the same terms in Swedish and Finnish and probably more common. So this is Cosmos API specification, it's Fagger, and basically it's read only, but it, it allows to get any data out of uh, Cosmos from, from this uh, web interface. And uh, yeah, ju just example, uh, my organization also in grid. So uh, I just created Cosmos API and uh, I've got with JSON and uh, basically with JSON allows to build any kind of integrations and uh, we, we can get uh, all, all these concepts as suggested terms in any tools, external tools. So now I'm coming to very interesting topic because uh, most of COVID-19 expert questions, they're kind of common for all countries, for all organizations. So uh, recently it was a new challenge announced. Uh, it's about epidemic question answering. And basically, um, it's interesting that uh, in this challenge, they already put uh, question uh, identifiers. So it's possible to, put, to turn all these uh, expert questions uh, to SCARS and to get them in an, uh, uh, exposed as ontology. So it means that uh, we can basically provide a possibility for researchers to link to these questions uh, directly from uh, let's say, uh, data repositories. So they can just upload data, they can create metadata layer, and after they can uh, search for related uh, questions and it's, it's all will become part of uh, metadata in the standardized format. So this is just example. Uh, this is something we are querying from uh, Cosmos API. And uh, for example, if you'll search for drugs, uh, we will get um, this concept that can be linked to uh, data set itself. And uh, just to explain why it's important, so this is just typical uh, visualization of uh, statistics, uh, and also it's from Italy, it's about like positive negative cases and uh, this kind of stuff. 
So it makes no sense without research questions. It's, it's a very flat structure. So we need to add uh, research questions to make it more uh, findable and uh, usable and uh, valuable for researchers. So uh, this example, how it looks like, uh, here you can see a Harvard Dataverse form uh, and it's some data set and uh, basically people uh, can, can just uh, uh, select uh, COVID QA uh, as vocabulary and after they'll type something in term field, list of questions will appear and they, they can select some related questions and uh, it will go back to our knowledge graph because it's already exposed as scores and uh, all these triples will be available um, in this uh, linked open data cloud. So um, this is also a very interesting um, uh, platform. So we have, like, like already said, about 700,000 data sets and we don't know what it's about. So we just need to, to find right uh, control vocabularies and uh, we're using uh, uh, tool called semantic chatbot and basically it can predict uh, based on, on, on data itself and based on, on labels uh, in data set it can build uh, it, it can predict all uh, ontologies that can be used for specific uh, columns in, in data set. So uh, in this mechanism uh, it just uh, basically uh, step by step confirmation if this link is uh, makes sense and uh, after it will produce a uh, mapping and schema that can be uh, used to turn any kind of data set to scores uh, semi-automatically. So of course we are running a few Sparkle endpoints and this is just an um, example um, of um, how, how actually um, Sparkle query uh, looks for coronavirus uh, bibliographic knowledge graph. So in this example, uh, we are just asking some publications from United States and this uh, mesh ID and a list of resources uh, to our infrastructure actually is appearing in the bottom. So, um, of course, uh, the problem with Sparkle, um, it's quite complicated to create uh, those uh, Sparkle queries. So it's uh, obviously a challenge and we want to make it user friendly uh, even for medical experts. So this is why we decided to build uh, different web interfaces for that. And uh, conclusion from one of projects, uh, I'm working on this project for quite some time and uh, they observed that users without semantic web knowledge actually um, find all these technologies hard to use and place a high value in end user tools that enable engagement. And now we are coming to chicken egg problems that users are building tools without uh, data models, without understanding what semantic web is. But what they really need is just to build knowledge graph with common ontologies. So of course, um, there are a lot of challenges and uh, basically uh, most of data sets just coming from different sources from uh, they are multilingual, data quality is lacking and uh, different data providers using different modeling schemas. And uh, we need to do some, some link data cleansing and versioning. And uh, um, well, a lot of modern repositories not, not doing uh, this uh, in a proper way at the moment. And it's difficult to assign and manu manually keep all uh, up-to-date entity relations in, in the knowledge graph. So all these kind of challenges that facing also uh, in Corona Y and uh, we are trying to find kind of solution uh, where uh, human can work together with um, artificial intelligence and can, can do something useful for uh, research. So we decided, okay, uh, let's try um, a bi bibliographic framework called BibFrame. It was created by Library of Congress in May 2011. And the idea that uh, it's basically uh, can be considered as network uh, that makes interconnectedness uh, commonplace. So instead of thousands of catalogers uh, describing the same source, there is only one cataloger that uh, can, can share uh, all, all his work with uh, other people. So um, in 2019, uh, BibFrame 2 was announced and now I'm going to tell you how it actually it works. So it contains a work instance, item and agents and subjects and uh, events. And 
it's a very well developed framework and basically uh, we already created first knowledge graph that uh, follows uh, those principles and uh, it's publicly publicly available and in order to, to create this knowledge graph we use of course uh, mark 21 because it's the most common standard uh, developed uh, uh, for bibliographic records and uh, well it's uh, it's very rich and uh, mark 21 basically allows us to integrate not only uh, papers in english but also to use uh, papers from other countries so how to integrate uh, data in the common knowledge graph so our recipe is just to use mark 21 and uh, after all control vocabulary should be expressed also in mark 21 uh, format and uh, we need to build uh, authority linking process with human in the loop uh, that allow to predict uh, actually links that should should be created so uh, different mark 21 fields could be linked to different ontologies or interlinked and uh, Every uh, court 19 paper in our case can get metadata enrichment provided by any team uh, working on, on uh, NLP extraction of entities, relations, or uh, linking control vocabularies together. So this is just example how it looks like in March 21. And uh, in this uh, representation, part of record was created uh, manually. It was basically extracted from a uh, paper itself. And second part in seven, uh, 650 field is coming from natural language processing pipeline. So basically this artificial intelligence uh, that can, can extract uh, entities and find uh, mesh uh, classifications and also uh, to put it in, inside of Mark record. So um, we're also keeping uh, provenance information that indicating that uh, some fields were created by, uh, uh, by machine and uh, it, this is how we can distinguish uh, human created records and uh, from, from machine generated records and relations stored in 730 fields so uh, we are using a few find framework it's quite common for bibliographic world and here you can see all all, uh, all papers available so you can scroll through and you can search to and uh, you can also um, filter on specific affiliations, so you can do really a lot. And uh, it's just available in our infrastructure uh, out of the box. So this is landing page, and uh, uh, basically uh, you can see there is paper uh, about uh, uh, some stuff, and uh, main authors uh, actually extracted uh, this deep learning, so we've used uh, and uh, we used deep learning to predict uh, their affiliations. And here you can see it's in field uh, corporate authors. And in uh, subjects fields, uh, we have all these relationships to uh, mesh ontology. And behind of this, there is also knowledge graph. So it's possible just both to use uh, this web interface to access information, but in the same time, it's possible to find the same papers uh, from the knowledge graph. <coughs> Sorry. So um, this example of uh, our conversion, so it's in BibFrame 2.0 and uh, it just basically uh, XML these uh, all concepts. And uh, if you're interested, you can just download it from uh, our Dataverse. And there is also example how you can uh, upload uh, uh, this data set into own um, Sparkle endpoint and you can just query and get exactly the same results as we have. So um, I already told you about uh, uh, standardization process a little bit, and we're using a Claria uh, framework called NDE. So it basically it's provide GraphQL uh, endpoints, and uh, we can also uh, we, we have possibility to integrate with uh, different tools, uh, all available ontologies if they have if they are available uh, from Sparkle endpoints. So this is example again uh, about Wikidata. So in this uh, case, uh, we will just select Wikidata um, ontology and uh, after searching on COVID, we'll get list of suggested terms and uh, uh, people uh, can, can actually link to any kind of uh, ontologies available in our infrastructure. So, um, 
uh, I don't know if you're familiar, if you know about this framework, but there is a very nice uh, tool called Hypothesis, and it's available as plugin, and basically it allows uh, to, um, uh, for, for uh, experts, it allows to confirm and create annotations for, uh, for any kind of text materials. So if they see there is some, some interesting uh, information, like facts, they can just... Uh, highlight uh, those sentences, those words, and create own annotation. So all this information uh, also stored in, in our own uh, database, and uh, we're trying to get it converted to knowledge graph. So uh, the idea that human annotators can uh, verify results and validate all statements, and after it will be integrated with statements from Indra that I already showed. And uh, there is also another tool, uh, it's called the Kana, and it, it was developed in, the, uh, in Japan. And basically, uh, it allows uh, to upload uh, fragments of text and to, to do labeling. And this kind of labeling is uh, very uh, useful for uh, natural language processing pipelines, because people can just uh, select, and, uh, select some, some entities in the text and create linkage to uh, the ontologies. So basically what we do using uh, uh, standardization pipelines, we are building an uh, operating system for open science that should be uh, completely um, public and uh, free. And everybody uh, ha has a possibility to just to go to our repository and uh, get uh, and clone, uh, clone it and after to run exactly the same infrastructure in their place. So this is really high reproducibility and uh, usability. So this trans transparency of data and services guarantees that uh, all experiments should bring exactly bring, bring new insights of COVID-19 research. And in the same time, they should bring exactly the same uh, results uh, uh, as people um, try to, in, uh, to do in, in other places. So uh, yeah, I already mentioned some components. So if, if you're interested, uh, I already shared uh, slides. And if you'll go on this link, you'll find all available uh, components. And we, we are continuously adding new components that we think can be useful for our teams, for our community. And uh, also we, we are in, uh, creating, a, um, we are working on our own data API. So basically we are trying to uh, get uh, all data uh, harmonized from uh, external sources available as data points. And uh, this is also sourced like you can find it. It's available as Swagger specification. So that's it. And uh, if you have some questions, I will be more than happy to answer. Wow, that's uh, very ambitious. <laughs> Thanks. And, and very interesting to hear about it, wow. Um, so how many people are on this team that you're working with? Okay, so um, uh, we have a very distributed um, organization. So it's basically uh, people are coming from all, all time zones and uh, they can also uh, be involved in different teams in, 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 and share uh, well teams with other people and uh, they, they also can change teams if they would like. So we, we don't have any uh, permanent structure, I would say. So people just select what they want to do. So some, some kind of tasks that are publicly available on Slack and uh, they can join, they can do something. And after they can leave if they don't have time or if they want to uh, switch topic. Wow, yeah, interesting. Questions, anybody? Yes, uh, uh, I'd be curious, can you elaborate a little bit more what is being done with respect to Wikidata? Okay, so um, Wikidata, um, uh, we, we have Wikidata available in Cosmos. So there is a web interface, you can browse through different uh, concepts. And in Wikidata, we, we actually, uh, we integrated with Dataverse data repository and uh, when you're creating a data set, you're filling uh, metadata uh, fields and after you have keyword field. So you can search in, in Wikidata and you can create triples to uh, Wikidata concepts. I will try to find this slide. Um, yeah, so like, like here. 
So there is vocabulary Wikidata, and after you will search on, on COVID or another topic, you will just get a triple vocabulary and term and vocabulary URL. So um, all this information, after it will be in metadata, it will be available as JSON. And because it's already standardized, it will go directly to, to the knowledge graph. Right, it's so <clears throat> it's basically, as I see, mostly read, right? You're not adding anything yet. To no, we are not. Itself. Again, we are trying actually to help people uh, to integrate uh, data and reuse data, yes. That's right. Yeah, but possibly one uh, low hanging fruit would be to want to identify, well, you discover uh, different identifiers for Wikidata entities. Mm -hmm. You can add that property to, to them. So you can, in Wikidata, it's recorded what the ID is in another data set, which mm -hmm. is already standard in Wikidata to do. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, um, I think it's possible and we, we just need people that are interested in this. Okay. Because we, we basically, we, we just follow the stream and uh, people are bringing different ideas and different data sets and we're trying to help this. Uh, any yeah, kind of yeah. Data integration. I see. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So um, another thing I wanted to ask about uh, actually, I will share my screen briefly because I want to bring people's attention to this. Okay, um, I, I will try to go out uh, from... Um, the, my basic question is about the possibility of connecting uh, literature information with uh, clinical data. Mm -hmm. And there is... Okay, let's see, I'm going to... Sorry, I'm trying to share my screen here. Okay, there we go. All right, this, um, this is a page uh, on the EMEA website. There's a webinar coming up on Thursday. I'll put out an email about it mm -hmm. that I noticed. Um, Melissa Handel and uh, Chris Shute are going to be talking about this uh, N3C effort, which is uh, a uh, collaborative that brings together clinical data for research purposes around COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, I think, is a really important thing because it's always been difficult for researchers to get enough clinical data to do their work. So my question is, um, what thoughts do you have about how this clinical data might be, for example, connected in some way to uh, data about the literature, as in the CORD-19 database? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, basically, uh, I already talked about BibFrame. I see a lot of potential in BibFrame because we, we can get all uh, bibliographic uh, records. Uh, so all this basically li literature uh, metadata integrated in, in one knowledge graph using BibFrame. And uh, there is also potential to put all uh, links to external uh, data sets in BibFrame in specific fields. And after you can get uh, uh, enriched uh, knowledge graph and basically by querying uh, for some uh, clinical data, you, you can get list of uh, papers that got linked to uh, well, those data sets. Right. Does anybody else have any uh, thoughts about this, this question? Okay. Uh, other questions for Slava? Oh, I have a question. So uh, I think you, you, you mentioned that uh, multilingual uh, yep. uh, data source might be a, a challenge for the international yep. consortium. So do you have any particular comments on how to handle this? Yeah, so, um, well, it's, it's really a huge challenge for us because, of course, uh, actually people should, should, should do this work. And uh, I would say if it's possible just to, uh, to force them to you at least to use research questions in English. So to get all data linked uh, that can, can answer some, some questions. So after we can ask them just to create kind of, um, well, subset 
from all available data sets and uh, to provide translations. Yeah, one, one way we may consider is, uh, I think we also have a component there to use standard ontology on vocabularies, right? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but they, they, yeah, they they should have a comma identify those exactly. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's feasible now. So we we really need, <laughs> need to think about uh, small subsets, and people should help us because only a researcher that or depositor that actually uh, created data set or deposited data set they know what they deposited, so they can only define uh, what kind of research questions covered in those data sets. And after uh, we'll find all this uh, data in different languages, we can ask them to translate. Okay. Yeah, that so seems how, like great. Oh, go how, ahead. How many language are there in your uh, data, data sets in uh, uh, Corona Y? Well, for, for now, we, we are dealing with English mostly. Okay. But of course, of course, the idea that if people will start to to reuse this infrastructure, so uh, we we can force them to uh, create links from English to their own language, and uh, at some point we will uh, improve standardization process, of course. And in fact, it's already happening in a, in the Netherlands, for example. So what, what kind of uh, RP tools uh, are you using basically to extract domain annotations, domain concepts? Okay, so, so uh, of course uh, we started with uh, sky spacing. So this is just a, frame, a famous uh, framework that was created by uh, Alien AI. And uh, uh, there are a lot of different libraries um, I, well, different teams are working on it and uh, they're trying, they're experimenting with a uh, lot of frameworks. So if you'll go to uh, Kranavai um, GitHub, you'll find all these experiments. So you, you, you mean uh, just a small subset uh, of your data actually processed by uh, people? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Slava. Very much appreciate your sharing your work with us. It looks extremely ambitious and uh, um, it's great to see it happening as a, as a collaborative effort. Yeah, I think it's very important uh, also for society to do it together. So basically yeah. all, all nations, all countries should combine efforts and uh, it's difficult to imagine that only one organization or even one country is able to find some solution. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, vaccine or at least some some kind of uh, solution to prevent all this COVID nineteen spread. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining too. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. bye. Thank you. Hmm.